Hi, this is Tim Gavin. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to install Former, and then we're going to go ahead and start building a fairly simple registration form. And over the course of the next few movies, we'll continue to build it and then process and validate the post data. So the first thing that we need to do is download Former from GitHub, which I've already done here. So I'm going to go ahead and unzip the Former.zip file. And let's take a look inside the Former folder. And we have the class.former.php. This is the former class, the meat and potatoes of former. We have a lib directory, which contains, for lack of a better term, pl some plugin classes for former. We have a my classes directory, which is the same thing as what's in the lib directory, but these are empty classes in which you can put your own methods or functions into and uh, extend former and we have a license file and a readme. We're only going to concern ourselves with the class.former.php file in this movie. In order to install former, we need to include this class file into our script. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to require once former slash class.former.php and the second and final step to installing former is to create an instance of it and give it its own name. So I like to call mine form just because it's really short and simple and easy to remember. But this is all that we had to do to install former into our script. So now we're ready to go ahead and start building our form. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll add the form open tag. And I'm going to use the form underscore open method to do that. The method accepts several parameters. But if we leave it at the default, let's go ahead and save that and refresh our web page. Take a look at what we have here. Forma will create this for us if we save the method at the default. We don't include any arguments into that method. What's happening here? All right, so Forma assumes that since we didn't add an action into our method, that we want to go ahead and post to and process the information in the, uh, the same script in which we're building the form in this case index.php and so that's exactly what we want to do. It assumes that our method is going to be post and that's correct and that it also assumes that we want to use a character set of UTF-8 and that's also true so we'll go ahead and leave that as is and let's go ahead and do a form close tag and all that does is just close the form and then we'll go ahead and do a submit button as well. And um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the input underscore submit method empty as well. I'm not going to pass any arguments to it. Go ahead and save that. Let's refresh our page and let's take a look at the HTML now. Okay, so here's our submit button. And again, default settings. Former assumes that we want to do an input type equals submit, name equals submit, value equals submit, and an ID of submit. So that's good. We'll go ahead and leave it at that. And now we're ready to start building our fields. So since we're building a registration form, Let's go ahead and ask the user for their first name. So to do that, we'll use the input underscore text method, which creates an input type equals text form element. This method will accept six parameters, and only the first one is required. And this is the case with most uh, methods with former, that it'll accept six to eight parameters um, Usually the first one is required, as we've seen already, some of them not even required, but you can see which ones those are in the docs. Okay, so within this method, input underscore text, the first uh, argument that we're going to add is the field name. So we'll ask for, since our, we're asking for the first name, we'll ask for F name. Let's go ahead and save that and refresh and take a look at what we've done now. You can see there's the element still with the submit button. And here's what Former's done for us so far. Input type equals text name equals F name and ID equals F name. So it's added in the ID for us. And since we didn't pass an ID argument, former goes ahead and makes an ID using the name field. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in our second argument. And this is our label. Okay, so and that's pretty powerful because we can actually pass a string of uh, like a, a div class or a span or you know, we can, we can, it, this is just a string, so we can pretty much put anything we want through here. Let's go ahead and refresh our page now, and you can see there's the label, and let's take a look at what Former's done. So it's done label for equals F name, which is based on this, 
which of course is based on this, and then here's our string and our closing label tag. All right, so let's go to the third parameter, and the third parameter, or the third argument, is a default value. So if we wanted to add a first name in here, we could do that, and then go ahead and refresh our page, and there's the default value, nothing magical there. And the fourth one is now our ID. So I'll just call this F name ID just so that uh, we can tell the two apart. Go ahead and take a look at our source code and now you can see that the ID has changed to F name ID and the label has changed to F name ID as well. Okay, let's go on to our fifth argument. And this is just a simple string. So we can go ahead and do a placeholder, a class, some JavaScript, something along those lines. So let's go ahead and uh, add a placeholder. And I'm going to go ahead and add a class too. And since we're adding a placeholder, let's get rid of our default value. We'll save this and refresh. All right, so there you can see the placeholder. And you can see that we also have a class. So this is what we just added right here. Okay. Let's go on to the sixth parameter. Now the sixth parameter is bootstrap only. And this is a inline help block. So we could go ahead and put in, um, enter your first name. I'll go ahead and save that and refresh. And you'll see that it doesn't show up. And why is that? I'm sure some of you have noticed that we're using Bootstrap right here. So the browser knows that we're using Bootstrap, but Former doesn't know that we're using Bootstrap. So we need to tell Former that that's what we want to use as our field wrapper. And we just do that right here when we instantiate it. Just pass that right there. The first argument when we're instantiating Former, the only argument is our wrapper. Uh, what we want to use as a wrapper. We can use a div tag or a p tag or whatever. Um, Whoops, might help if I type that correctly. Here we're going to use Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and refresh this. Now you can see that everything's been laid out with the Bootstrap classes and so forth. And we have our help block here. And let's take a look at the HTML now and see what has been done. So now you can see that we actually have a, a wrapper around our input element, our label, and our help block. And it's got the class of form group. And former has also added the form control class to the class that we added previously. Now, if we didn't have the foo class in there, it's still going to add the form control class. It's also added a, uh, an ID here so that if you wanted to do some jQuery, some JavaScript, where you maybe append or prepend um, custom error messages, you don't have to do it to the um, input element itself. You can actually do it to the wrapper. Okay? So let's go ahead now and we don't need these in here anymore. I just wanted to show, oh, you know, here's a little trick I can show you. You're not going to see it right now uh, because we're not validating, but if I wrap this string in square brackets, go ahead and save it and refresh, you'll see that that disappears. What happens here is that since this is in square brackets, this will now show up on error message. So if the first name field is required and we submit the form and they don't fill it in, you'll now see this string of text right under here in red. Since this is all bootstrap, everything will be in red here since it will have the has error class. So that's just a nice little trick. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to ask for the user's last name. So I'll just copy that. And I'll go ahead and save that and take a look. And let's take a look at the HTML real quick. And you can see that each one of these is separated. It's got its own little wrapper around the element and the label and so forth. So Former adds all of that bootstrap for us. Now again, if we don't want bootstrap, go ahead and delete that, refresh. And now you can see that it's just plain vanilla. But we want to go ahead and use bootstrap for this. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is add our email or ask for an email address. We're going to use the input underscore email method here and it's identical to the input text except it does input type equals email instead of input type equals text. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. We'll save it, refresh, take a look at the HTML and you can see input type equals email. Everything else is the same. 
All right, and now let's ask them for their password. So we're going to use the input underscore password method, identical to input underscore text and email, except this just creates a password element. And let's go ahead and we'll duplicate this. And we'll confirm our password. Okay, and let's go ahead and refresh and take a look at what we have so far. Okay, so these are password elements. Here's the first name. Now, former, actually at this point, we can go ahead and submit the form. And if we do, it's going to save that information as well. So we don't have to do anything else to the form. It's ready to go and submit. And if there's a form error somewhere, somebody forgets to fill in a field, it's going to retain all that information so that we don't have to ask the user to um, to retype it which is very annoying and we don't have to code that ourselves into our fields in the next movie we're gonna add a drop-down menu to our forum and discuss the drop-down menu options within former